everyone, welcome back or hello if you're new. In today's video, I'm going to be sharing some of my tips with you guys on how I maintain a consistent Instagram feed. I feel like all of these tips are just little things, but when they add up and when you put them all together, it can help make your entire feed look like it has a theme and feel very, very consistent. I've had the same sort of Instagram feed for the last couple of years now, so I've really gotten used to uh, what kind of things come into play when it comes to keeping everything looking very similar. Even when I travel, like I try to keep to the same sort of theme and I'll just make some very minor adjustments. Now I am making this video because a lot of people did ask me about it and people seem to be very curious as to how to keep things very consistent, so I'm just sharing what I know. But I hope you guys enjoy the video. If you do, please give it a thumbs up for me and if you're new, hit subscribe. My first tip is to do with colors. Now, obviously, when you first come to an Instagram page, one of the biggest things that you're going to notice is the color theme and if that is consistent or not. Throughout this video, I'm just gonna keep bringing my Instagram back as an example, uh, just so that I have something to reference. But when it comes to colors, I would personally recommend choosing two to three dominant colors to have seen throughout your feed. For me, these would be black because a lot of my interior is black, a lot of my clothing is black, and of course my hair is black. White because a lot of the walls and sheets and decor in my apartment are white and I just enjoy how white looks on an Instagram feed. And green because I like to incorporate plants and a little bit of nature into my feed as well. Now it can be really hard to stick to the same three colors and you might feel bored when you're doing that as well. So I'd recommend adding in a couple of accent colors. For me, the accent colors that I like to use are gold and the other accent color that I frequently visit is red. I find that by having these little accent pops of color every now and again, it means that I can be a little flexible when I am traveling. Uh, for example, when I last went to Japan, I was able to incorporate a lot more red and I felt that it still fit into my theme quite nicely. And then the red disappeared again for a little bit after I got back home. But having the dominant colors and then the accent colors will allow you a little bit more to work with. Next, I would recommend having some sort of direction for the actual content itself, not just the color, but what is actually in the photograph. Are you gonna be predominantly photographing stuff to do with fitness and health? Are you gonna be predominantly fashion and lifestyle? What do you want to showcase? People are more likely to follow Instagram accounts that have one, three, four major themes running through them rather than something that jumps from one extreme to the other all of the time. Next is filters and editing. I don't normally recommend using filters. I don't really like pre-made filters, but I understand it can be easy for people to use things like uh, VSCO cam or Visco cam, however you want to pronounce it, to pop some filters on their photo. If you are doing that kind of method, I would recommend uh, either making some custom ones or downloading some custom ones. That way, you know, it's more your own or, you know, just making a set style for yourself and using the same ones every time. If you're doing what I do, which is normally popping the photos into Photoshop, because I do take a lot of my photos on a DSLR camera. Like, don't get me wrong, I still take some on my phone, but I do like to have that better quality and then I can use the images elsewhere if I need to. So that way I do like to just take them on my camera. Because I am taking them on my camera, I'm shooting them in a raw format, which means I do have to open them in Lightroom first and then in Photoshop. If you're choosing to go this way, then I'd recommend having a similar editing process for the photos to make them match. So I like to go through and make sure everything is as perfectly white balanced as I can get it. And by that, I mean, I like to make sure the blacks are black and the whites are white. This is easy for photos like photos of myself or photos of my apartment, which is a majority of what my Instagram is anyway. If I'm traveling, that's when it becomes a bit trickier. And so I tend to start editing a little bit more when it does come to those travel photos, just to keep the colors more consistent. So that could mean just taking out a wall color from something behind me or even adding in a fake background sometimes. Like if I'm taking a photo of food and I don't like the tables at the cafe, sometimes I will just do a sneaky one and drop in a tabletop that I like better. And of course you do not have to go to that much effort. I'm just really finicky when it does come to what I want my theme to look like. I feel like another really important element that will tie your photos together is the lighting. Have you actually considered is the lighting matching? I know this is one that not too many people think about, but look at the photos that you really like and what is it that you like about them? 
Do they have a similar sort of lighting style? Are they photos that you've taken? Are they photos that someone else has taken and you can kind of replicate or make your own sort of style around? So I'll just bring up two examples for you. Let's use my Instagram feed as one. So the lighting that I like to use is usually very clean, uh, very balanced. There's not many shadows. It's nice and bright. And on the other hand, we have my Instagram pal Ian Elkins, who you should be following if you're not following him already. But as you can see, the lighting in his photos is very moody and he does like to play with shadows. So regardless of the fact that he has more colors drawn through his photographs, there is a very, very consistent and strong theme there in just the lighting itself. If you're gonna go from taking selfies in a dimly lit nightclub to taking brunch photos under terrible down lighting to taking nice outdoor photos, it's gonna become very inconsistent very quickly. And be picky. If you really want to start theming your Instagram for, you know, whatever reason, whether you want to grow your Instagram or whether you just want to create like a nice like little gallery of your own photos, be really picky with what you post. You don't have to post everything. And finally, plan your feed. There are some photographers who I know. Now this seems like such a drawn out method to me. They'll actually sit in Photoshop and like put the photos side by side and see what works well together and what doesn't and all of that kind of thing. I honestly, that's just too much time for me. So I downloaded an app called Sneak Peek. There is a YouTuber. Um, I'll try and find her channel and I'll link it in the description box for you guys. She's a makeup YouTuber, but her boyfriend created an app called Sneak Peek. And you can, I'm pretty sure it was free to download and you upload the photos you want and you can see, you know, how it's going to look in your feed and just plan it out and all of that sort of thing. This step isn't the most necessary step because I didn't really plan my feed for quite a long time. It's only something that I've started doing more recently when I want to break up because I don't want so many photos of myself, which are the ones that obviously get more likes, but I do want to break them up with other things that I find visually pleasing. And I want to do that in a way that it still feels consistent and it's still nice to look at when you come onto my page in the first place. But have fun with it, experiment, see what's going to work for you, what kind of photos make you happy, what you want to take and what you want to share with people. There's no strict rules you don't have to follow exactly what I'm saying. These are just things that I've learned which helped me keep it consistent over the last few years. I hope you're all doing really well. If you are new, hit subscribe and make sure you've got the alerts turned on so you can see when I do upload a new video. And I will catch all of you guys either in the comments below, on my Instagram, or in my next video. Bye!